With entertainment, no matter the industry, we are always comparing eras. Oftentimes it's due to reminiscing about better times, golden eras, if you will. But there's one thing that I believe gets missed when we make these comparisons. It's not about whether or not it's fair or unfair. I just think it's something that's forgotten and taken for granted by both creators and customers, and it's nobody's fault. And what that is, is anticipation. It's not to say that it doesn't exist, it's to say that it's simply not the same as it was in years past. Most of this is simply due to technology changes. How we consume media has fundamentally changed with the growth of the internet. And whether we realize it or not, this has changed our experience as well as it became so central to our lives. I think what's happened is that now we've gone over a decade with it being so crucial that we forgot what it was like when it wasn't. I'll give you an example, comics, and we can put the digital releases aside for now. But we used to learn about new comics and upcoming comics on the actual newsstand or by coming to the comic book shop and browsing. Sure, there were previews and things like Wizard Magazine in the early 90s, but that's far different from what we have right now. This made every new comic release almost an event of sorts. You weren't bombarded with information and I think this made us more stoked for projects, even if they didn't turn out to be these legendary stories. Now, people know about everything that's released via the internet. I'm not referring to people being more informed about their purchases. I'm saying that the element of surprise isn't nearly as regular. People often know what books they're going to get before they arrive at the comic book shop. Hell, sometimes entire books get leaked. Now, there's far less conversation about fan theories, which used to be a really fun part of it. It's far more reactionary now. It's like many entertainment companies don't even consider the anticipation element as part of their marketing. It's more about trying to appease the lowest common denominator with the shortest attention span through information overloading. The conversation went from what do you think is going to happen next to I know exactly what's going to happen and I just like or dislike it. The conversation and enthusiasm is much different now. I encourage you guys to go look at the audience anticipation and reaction in the early 80s to like Return of the Jedi and Star Wars. We were the first four in and uh, when we got here, people just in invaded, it was a madhouse. The biggest surprise, well I don't wanna give it away to anybody. You will never ever see this era of movie watching or theater again. It's not because of how things are good or bad now. No, no, no. It's because the buildup has changed, which means so has the experience. Now a new movie comes out and there will be a million reviews before the thing even hits theaters near you. And now you have to fight like hell to avoid these spoilers. No longer are these types of things buried in some magazine. The same can be said about video games. You remember waiting outside a GameStop or Funko Land or whatever to get a new game? Anticipation had always been part of the experience whether we think about it like that or not. And it's lost now and very hard to replicate in these times. I'm very much included in this if you consider it a problem. Because we weren't overloaded with information, we were talking more about what we were looking forward to. We were having these fun arguments about power levels of characters and the latest thing. It's over 9,000! I really would love for this to return. And if you do try to replicate this, not everybody is going to be into this. The Ripperverse keeps everything tied to the chest, really close. For example, that's where this whole NDA inside joke came from. We'd rather show you than tell you and overload you with all this information up front. You can still, though, make an informed purchase, but not so much, or we don't reveal so much, that it spoils what has happened. And because the consumption has changed, you'll even get those that think it's a problem if we don't give, like, I some social security number in the first couple of books. It's because we've become so used to getting so much information quickly and then moving on to the next property. So to me, once anticipation for the product became this afterthought, so did the overall enthusiasm. It's not the only thing, but the culture around these things just changed and we haven't been able to return back to form. The Ripperverse, we're trying to find these creative ways to do this with at least replicating a smidgen of what it was back in the day. I don't think it's impossible, but you have to understand that you'd be an outlier if you can pull this off. And the more I think about this, the more I believe that 
partially. The reason that we don't really see these new properties that are created in this era that will stand the test of time is because the game and landscape just completely changed on us. Thanks for watching right now. The Ripperverse is in the middle of our latest campaign, Yaira Number no. 1, which was written by the Saskas. Head over to Ripperverse.com, pre order, and check out our first live action trailer and the latest Ripperverse Studios production. Y'all be easy.